Okay, good. Okay, so uh, we are going to linearize this around a steady state. That means first find the steady state and then get the linearized equation, evaluate the linear coefficient around that steady state, and then you get the transfer function. Then we can use it for uh, looking at step response, uh, impulse response, etc. So the very first step is to uh, solve these two nonlinear algebraic equations. Unfortunately, I'm going to switch between these two computers. Um, and whenever I go to the other computer, you will see a blank in the recorded version. Let's take a look at these two uh, terms. And we're going to write a program to solve these two nonlinear equations in MATLAB, to learn basically how to solve a system of nonlinear algebraic equations in MATLAB. Okay. So, some of you have already started doing this. I've seen uh, you know, gotten to this part. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is write a function that's going to be used by f solve to get the steady state numbers for you. So, like this, uh, let's call it example dot f z dot f. Uh, I don't have right permission on that, so let me just go to the desktop. Okay, so edit cg dot m. Okay, and function f equals cg x. So what I'm doing here is I'm defining that it's going to be a function as opposed to a script. Okay, and this function. In the, at this stage, the context doesn't know what is the length of x or what is the length of f. Okay. So I need to define that internally. And the function itself has a number of uh, constants, so I need to define those constants. Okay. So again, let me switch back for you to take a peek at the two functions. Q minus C1 times square root of H1 minus H2 is the first function. And C1 times square root of H1 minus H2 minus C2 times square root of H2 is the second function. So C1, C2, and Q are numbers. Q can actually be a function, but for steady state purposes, as long as you keep the inlet flow rate constant, the outlet heights would be constant. So Q in that respect is going to be a constant. And uh, the constants are uh, Q equal to 1. And uh, C1 equals, I just picked up some numbers, 0.4. Okay. C1 equals 0 0.4. Now, if I make any mistake, I'm just writing this program so that I will make mistakes. And you should feel comfortable that if you make a mistake, you can recover and understand and decipher what this error message means. Okay. So uh, if I make a mistake as I'm making it, if you notice it, please correct me. If not, you will find out because MATLAB will tell us. <laughs> okay. So I'm defining the three numbers that I need for my function. Then I'm going to say f1, the first function, is equal to what was the function? Uh, q1, sorry, q minus q minus c1 times square root of h1 minus h2. So I may just write it as h1 minus h2, okay, but I have to define what h1 and h2 are. Okay. Anytime anything that appears on the right hand side of an equal sign must be defined previously. Okay. So here I'm going to, uh, I, I have the option of putting x1, x2 or saying h1 is equal to x of 1, h, uh, h2 is equal to x of 2. Okay. 
I'm defining H1 and H2 to be the two numbers that come in through the input argument x. This is f of x. x is a nonlinear function that the num number of variables. It could be 10 variables in 10 equations. The same idea will work. Okay? And then what I'm doing is I'm evaluating the first function. And I'm going to evaluate the second function, f of 2 equals now <coughs> f2 is equal to c1 times sqrt of h1 minus h2 okay. minus c2 times square root of h2. Okay, so I've written this function. Now I have to save this. And then see, as long as it is in the path, in the current directory, it should be available to be in MATLAB. So if I do ls, for example, it should list all the files in that. So there is a file called eg.m. Okay? And if I want to evaluate eg, I can, eg takes two numbers. Okay? So I can put 1, 1. And just to make sure that that function that I've written works without any syntax error. So it takes those two values and evaluates those two functions and returns those function values. That's what I'm asking. F1 is 1 and F2 is minus 0.6 using these set of numbers. X height H1 is 1 and H2 is that 1. Any questions so far? So this is what you need to do to solve any nonlinear equation f of x equal to 0. You write that function f of x. Okay. But what you have done is you have just written the function. So for any given value x1, x2 or height h1, h2 in this case, it will return f1 and f2, computed value. But we want to find those values of H1 and H2 which drives the F1 and F2 to 0. So that is done by this function, built-in function called F solve. So it's like ODE45. ODE45 integrates all the differential equations, F solve solves a set of algebraic equations, nonlinear algebraic equations. So here you need to tell which function it is. So you do that with an F sign EG. And the next argument is you have to specify an initial guess for this nonlinear problem. So I'm going to say 1, 1, okay, and finish that, and it gives me the number. Can you make sense out of that? What does it tell you? It gives you an error message or a warning message. It says optimization terminated, first order optimality is less than option tall function. That means it's think that it hasn't really converged. Okay. Any nonlinear solver is going to use the trial and error method. It's going to guess different values of H1 and H2, cancel the function F1 and F2 are zero. So it's using this repeatedly, maybe a hundred times, and then it says, okay, I've given up. Now now the question that you need to ask yourself is, is this the correct solution for the problem? So these are the H1 and H2, like 9.0278 and 2.7778 are the two heights, H1 and H2, that MATLAB finds. Okay. So how would you test whether this is the correct answer? Plug it back into the function. For example, ANS. Okay. ANS is a variable that contains these two solutions. Okay. And uh, what do you think now? Is it correct result? Why would you say that? What would you expect? If I'm not making sense, please do stop me and ask. Okay? I'm assuming that you're following everything and then I'm asking you a question just to check that you know. It is multiplying the two function values. So what you see that is take that number and evaluate those two functions as one of two. So this is the first function, this is the second function. So both are multiplied by <coughs> You can say that it is a converged result up to ten digit accuracy. Okay? Yeah. I was hoping that somebody would ask, why is it a complex? Can you guess why it would be complex? You do find the result to be containing both the real part and the divided real part. In the answer, this is the height. The height comes out to be a real part plus zero 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 height, an imaginary part. Okay. 
So let's see how small the imaginary part is. Up to four significant digits is zero. The imaginary part is zero. Okay. But um, it may be actually more than that. So let me do format long. It says print me all the 16 digits that you have and see how, to how many digits it's close to zero, the imaginary part. Okay. So I'm going to resolve it again because I lost the answer. And this time let me store it in HF. So you can see that it is zero to about eight or nine significant digits. Okay. Why did it become complex? This is your question. Right? MATLAB automatically switches to complex arithmetic if during the step somewhere it calculates the root of negative number. Now here we have a root of them, h1 minus h2, right? So if h1 minus h2 during its search process becomes negative, it switches into complex arithmetic. It does all the calculations in complex arithmetic. But the real answer is the real number because for the precision that we are calculating up to four or five significant digits, you can get rid of the complex part, the imaginary part. Okay? No matter how good a guess you give, it's not going to stick only with the guess that you give. It's going to use that to find the next guess and the next guess and the next guess in search of the answer where the function is zero. Okay, so in the search process, you have a difference of two numbers and the square root of that. In the search process, if h1 becomes smaller than h2, you get into complex arithmetic. But as it searches towards the correct solution, the imaginary part goes towards zero because the solution is real. The heights are real. The height cannot be complex, right? And that's what this is showing you. That is That's a good question. Why did it give the error message? It's not an error message. It's a warning saying that they did not meet the tolerance. There is a default tolerance that Epsilon uses, and that is probably 10 to the minus 10 or something, and it did not go below that. But for our purposes, two about five significant digits, this is a good answer. Okay. Now, if you, the next question that you may ask is, how do I extract only the real part of the number? I want only the real part of the number. And there is a function called real. So if you say real, HS it throws away the imaginary part. It extracts only the real part. Obviously, there is another function called imaginary, which will extract only the imaginary part. Okay. Later on in this course, we will need complex arithmetic. Okay. So we will be searching even eigenvalues, for example, we know are complex. Right? So we have a real function in the imaginary part. So um, you should learn how to extract the real and the imaginary part. Any questions so far? Okay, so that is the steady state part. So these numbers we need. Now we are going to write the function for doing the linearization around this steady state, around these two numbers. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to now write a script file. You can actually do this in the MATLAB in an interactive environment. That is, type command there one by one. But if you make a mistake, you need to go back and re-enter the command. So what I prefer, and I would encourage you to do the same thing, is to write a file, which you call a script file. It is not a function file. So you can throw any command in the file that you would normally enter and execute that. Okay. So let me create another function, script.m. What, what happened here? This surprises us, uh, even I would guess, and we need to be able to not be perturbed by it and try to figure out. There is a function called script already built in MATLAB, and it has all these commands in there. So when I created script.m, it opened up that file. Okay, I don't want that file. I just have to create a new name. Okay, edit example. If it doesn't exist, you want to create it? Sure, go ahead. Okay. okay. So I'm just going to comment that this is a script file. Okay. And what I need to do is I need to get these two numbers and save them in the workspace. So let me just first do that. H uh, S equals F song at PG. Okay. 
and then H1S equals HS1, H2S equals HS3. So by executing these within the search, I'm going to have these two numbers, H1S and H2S, the steady state values for H1 and H2 in those variables, because I need to evaluate them later on. Now I'm going to start the linearization. Okay. So what do I need to do for the linearization? I need to do the differentiation symbolically. So I need to define all the symbols that appear in those two equations. And I have um, Q appearing, C1, C2, A1, A2, in those equations, uh, H1, H2, and Q, and S. Okay. Now, you need to probably look at uh, the other screen. Okay. So you will see A1 appearing there, Q appearing there. And C1, C2, H1, H2. Okay. So whatever symbol appears here, you're going to define that as a symbol. Declare that as a symbol in the MATLAB. Okay. And then you need to define these two functions. So I'm going to define F1. F1 is going to be a symbol, symbolic expression. Okay. So it's going to be Q minus C1 times square root of uh, H1 minus H2. And F2 is equal to C1 times square root of H1 minus H2 minus C2 times square root of H2. Okay. Are you able to see it in the back? Okay. Uh, so let me just execute up to that point and see okay, if it saves that. And then now uh, it's an older version of the function. Which one? Not the window reader or the font reader, I guess. Oh, oh, you mean, uh, not there, yeah. Uh, this is an earlier version of it, but uh, under the reload control, I must say, yeah, around that file. Okay. So I have started executing the contents of this file. So I'm going to step through one by one. So now you will have H2S uh, saved that number. Now if I want to get only the real part, I should go back. This is how I would write a program in MATLAB and okay. Run it, see whether it's what I want. Now I forgot to extract the real part. So I will add real. It's not only in the first step that occurs. You, you may avoid you may getting it there. Yeah. So let's try this. Do you want two one? Yeah, but I can see whether it's returned the real or imaginary by uh, looking at this number, which has. No, no, it's real. So it did work. <laughs> Different guess. So from the guess towards the final one, it takes several steps. In any one of the steps, if H1 minus H2 is negative, you're going to get into complex. But if the path doesn't in, in, involve that negative number, square root of a negative number, then the final one is uh, a real one. And in this case, the real doesn't really do anything. It just takes the same thing. Okay. Uh, now, what would be F1? F1 would be a symbolic expression. And same thing with F2. Okay. Now I can I've just checked 
that everything up to this point works without any syntax errors, we can continue writing it. Okay. So what do I want to do? I want to take those derivatives. So again, I'm going to switch to this um, board. Because now I've solved the steady state part. I'm doing the linearization. That means I basically have to take the derivative of x1 with respect to h1 and then evaluate them at those steady state values. Then I have to do f1 with respect to h2 and evaluate them at the steady state values. f1 with respect to q and evaluate them at the steady state values. Do the same thing for f2. Okay? And I call these as a1, the coefficients as a1, 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 So a1, a1 is nothing but the partial derivative of f1 with respect to h1 evaluated at the steady state. So I need to program these parts. I have figured it out by hand. Now I need to program these parts. Okay, any questions? So there are four two by two matrix and then the right hand side B1, B2. I need to evaluate each one of them. Okay. Here I have already shown it analytically, but the beauty about MATLAB and symbolic toolbox is no matter how complicated the function is, you can write these two lines. Whatever the complicated function, it's like in your current assignment, you have e to the power something, you have to take the derivative, you're going to get a very complicated expression. You don't need to worry about it. Let MATLAB handle that. Okay? And all you need to do is uh, put A11x. I'm just creating this symbol. A11 is the first element of the matrix. It's going to be partial derivative of F1 with respect to H1. So what would I do? I would say DF, DIFF. That is the function that takes the derivative of any expression. So it's going to be F1 with respect to H1. That's all you need to do. So it takes that derivative, but it's going to give you a symbolic expression. Okay? Then you need to do all the other things. A12S equals DIFF F1 with respect to H2. And B1S is equal to DIFF F1 with respect to Q. So that's the linearization of the first equation. Repeat the thing. K21S equals DIFF. F2 with respect to H1. Thank you. I'm just looking at the keyboard. So <laughs> A22S equals DIFF. F2 with respect to H2. And B2S. I'm using the S just to indicate that it's a symbolic expression. I want to differentiate it from a numerical one later on. Okay? It's going to be DIFF, F2 with respect to Q. Okay? Now let me save this and then execute one more time. Okay? So I just want to make sure that they've taken the derivative. Okay? That's still a symbolic expression. C1 is a symbol, H1 and H2 are symbols. Okay. And so that seems to be working fine. So the only place where you can make a mistake here is in your definition of F1 and F2. You make a error there, typo, then that will be carried through. Okay. But otherwise, there is no error that you can introduce in the differentiation itself because MATLAB does that for you. Okay. And what do I do next? So I've taken all the partial derivatives I need for this problem. I need to evaluate them at the steady state. Yeah. Right, right. So it is what you see here. A11 is partial derivative of epsilon with respect to H1. And that is the one that multiplies the deviation variable H1. Okay. So you see that at the top, A11 times H1 minus A12 times H2 equals B1 times Q. And the very uh, top line, yeah, the blue. So A11 is a coefficient that multiplies the deviation variable H1. Okay. So uh, the next step would be to evaluate these coefficients. All we have done is taken the derivative. Now I need to substitute the numbers, evaluate these derivatives at that steady state. And the steady state I have already found out in lines three and four. Okay. So I'm going to define these constants now. C 
equals 0 0.4. Previously, C1 was a symbol. I declared it as a symbol. But now I'm defining values for them. Okay? C2 is equal to 0 0.6. And uh, I think that's all I need, right? Q, Q I, do, I do need Q, right? Q equals 1. And I need, uh, now what do I need? Think about it. If I look at this expression for A11S, it's going to be Type K11S. This had C1, but it also has H1 and H2 because it's a symbolic derivative. So I need to replace H1 and H2 with what? H1S and H2S, the steady state value. Okay. So I need to define those. So I'm going to de define H1 as equal to H1S, H2 as equal to H2S. Because the expression contains H1, I need to load that H1 with the value, correct value, which is H1S, and H2 with the value H2S. Okay. Now I can say A11N is equal to real sub A11S. What I'm doing is I'm taking that ex symbolic expression A11S and say substitute all the numbers that I have defined into that expression, okay? And then take the real part, okay? If it is uh, if it has a complex number, so let me just save that and make sure that that part works, okay? And then I can uh, fill the remaining part. Pardon me? Thank you. I'm saving syntax Okay. <laughs> all. These things are all working. I know. I just want to make sure that works. So the answer is minus 0 0.08. That is the derivative evaluated at the steady state. Okay. Using that steady state value, all the numbers. So it has substituted all the numbers that we have defined into the symbol. And this allows you to automate this linearization process in MATLAB very efficiently, no matter how complicated the problem is. Okay. Now all I need to do is copy that and paste it several times. Okay. One, two, 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 one. And then I need to do the same thing for B1N as equal to real. And we have seen the subs function before. B1N. Uh, good question. If I did not define one of the numbers, what does it do? Symbol, right. So it will, it, it will, what else will give you an error message? If you didn't have the real, then it will give you a symbolic expression. Right. Right. If you, ha if you did not define any of these numbers, then the symbols, the undefined symbols will be left as symbols. The resultant expression will be a symbolic expression. Yeah. Yeah. The best way to learn all these things is go to the real uh, MATLAB window and type and see what happens. Sub simply substitutes all the numbers and evaluates it. So A11S by itself is a symbolic expression. But when I pass that, I have defined, for example, C1 is defined, H1 is defined, okay? H2 is defined. 
all these numbers are substituted when I execute this expression. Okay. And in this case, because we started with the second guess, there is no complex part. So it's one it is a real number, so the final answer is also a real number. So I didn't have to pass through the real at all. You'll get the same result. Okay. What do I do next? Well, I need to go back to the laptop and see, okay, I've done all these parts. I've taken the derivatives. I've evaluated them as number. Okay. And so what I have at this stage are these two equations. Okay. The second equation is this two here. A2 times GX2 D2. This was this number I have figured it out. And this one. Plus this number I have figured out times S2 plus D2 times uh, B2 happens to be 0, B2, B1 happens to be 1 in this case, but I have a linearized differential equation. Then I do the Laplace transform. That I have to do by hand. Okay. So the Laplace transform gives you this algebraic equation, and uh, I have two algebraic equations in two unknowns that I need to solve simultaneously. So Okay, so these two equations that I'm solving simultaneously are the following. Uh, A1s times H1 of s minus uh, A11h1 minus A12h2 equals B1q. And the second equation is this one. And B2 is 0, so I'm going to use that and that. So A2S H2 minus A21 H1 minus A22 H2 equal to 0. So after linearization around the deviation variable, these are the two algebraic equations. After taking the Laplace transform, these are the two algebraic equations that I get. What, I, what do I want? I want what is the height in the second tank with input. What is this transfer function? Okay. Or I might want what is H2 over H1. Or I might want what is H1 over Q. Ratio of two transfer functions. Like one is an input, the other one is an output. Okay. I want to get this. So in order to be able to do that, I need to be able to solve these two equations for H1 and H2. Treat everything else as a constant and solve this for H1 and H2. Question. Oh, that's because B2 happens to be 0. The reason B2 is 0 because the Q doesn't appear in the second function. Okay? So we saw in the last class that we can put this in a matrix form, and that is what I'm going to implement in MATLAB. Okay? So I'm going to write this as a product of uh, two matrices equal to the right hand side. On the right hand side, you will have B1, Q, 0. Then you will have H1 and H2. And this one we figured out as A1, S minus A1, 1 minus A1, 2. And here minus A2, 1 and A2, S minus A2, 2. So this is the part we need to program next because we have found out what these coefficients are, A11, A12, B1. We know all of them. The unknown is H1 and H2. We need to solve for these. We're solving these two equations simultaneously. Okay? Any questions on that? So I'm going to flip to the PC to show you how to program that part. Okay? So we have all the coefficients that we need. So I'm going to define capital A as a matrix, okay, and it's going to be A1 uh, times S minus A11N, A minus A21N, and I want you to explain what I'm doing here, okay, minus A21N, okay, 
a2 times s minus a2 to n. What have I done there? Created that matrix that I wrote down on the earlier page, 2 by 2 matrix. Okay. So then I need to create a vector b. And that vector is going to be uh, b1n. Now what would that vector be? Let's take a look at it. b1 times q. Okay. So q is a symbol. Okay. So s is a symbol here. A11, these are all numbers. A1 is an area, that's a number, this is a number, this is a symbol in the expression. What I want is a symbolic expression for x1 and x2 in the transfer function variable x. This q as a quotient function. Okay? So if q is 0, what's going to happen? What does it mean? Nothing happens, no change. q0 means the deviation from your steady state boundary of small q, which you said is 1, that, that deviation is 0. Now, if that is 0, what happens to h1 and h2? So there is no change in height. So that, that's, that's what we mean by deviation from the steady state. So once you have found out the steady state, this equation doesn't tell you anything about where the steady state is. It has incorporated all the information about where the steady state was in calculating this coefficient a1 this one itself, we cannot predict what the steady state value is. You can only predict what is the deviation from the steady state is when you excite the system, when you perturb the system, by putting Q as something different from zero. Okay? So this is what we need to define. So I'm going to have B as uh, B1N, I have a typo there, times Q. And then uh, uh, the next one is B2, and in this case, happens to be 0. Now, if you notice, when I declare the symbol, I put Q there. If you forgot to do that, and if you had this, you will get an error message. Yeah, because we have to declare, yeah. Pardon me? Ah, do I have to transpose D? Do I have to? The way that I've written it? Because I put a semicolon here, this is going to the next row. So it's going to be actually a column vector. Okay. So then if you have this the space, then you have to put a transpose. Okay. So the way I have constructed this B is as a column vector. Okay. And uh, the next step would be H is equal to A backslash B. That gives you the two transfer functions, H1 and H2, symbolically. Okay? So let's save this and run it one more time. Yeah. What does that do? Yeah. That is a soft, that uses Belgian elimination to solve the problem. A x equals a b. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that, yeah. Uh, you, you are raising very interesting questions. Yeah, um, it works on the very well posed problem, meaning a square matrix. I'll get to you soon, okay? But if you have non square matrices, there is something called pseudo inverse in a least square sense. I don't know whether you've seen that in a linear algebra course. This operator does work for that too in a least square sense. The operator is backslash. Okay. So that so MATLAB backslash operator is quite powerful, but for our purpose in this course we will always see a square matrix that we can do this. Yeah. Um, And now talk about it. That is a function name. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what it does, but there is a. You are right. What we are doing is called the Jacobian matrix of a nonlinear function. Okay. 
So the matrix A11, A12, A21, A22 is called a Jacobian matrix. And uh, I'm not sure uh, whether it's that, that particular <laughs> derivative or not. You need to look at the operators. What, what, do they, what do the input mean and what does it do actually? So there are many, many different definitions and interpretations of Jacobian. But it's a very good thing that you are asking. Is there something built in already? That's how you learn more on your own in my class. Okay? So it is there, but I'm not confident that it does what we want it to do. Okay? So that's it. So you need to now run this. Oh, I didn't suppress the A matrix, so it will probably print out. A, A, there it is. There you see something very strange. What is happening here? Hey, the first element of this is A1 times A. What are you saying about the situation? From the line. Okay. One of the things that I forgot. So it appears as a symbol A1 times S plus ratio of two numbers. That's because it's doing symbolic processing. It cannot handle floating point numbers. It cannot handle decimal. So they convert it into a ratio of two numbers that's approximately equal to the and then carry out all the arithmetic accuracy. Okay? So that's your A. That's your transfer function now. Okay? If that's your A, the transfer function is H. This will be H now. That's your transfer function. First row, H1 and H2. These are the two transfer functions. Now this is uh, unruly, so you can. There is another function called VPA, variable precision arithmetic. So if you specify this, then it will truncate it to four digits. Okay, you can specify the number of digits. I will put a copy of the script file on Moodle so that you can download it and play with it and learn from that. Okay, I think the next class is already here. My apologies, I think I'm too long. Yeah. Uh, F5 here, but it depends on the version of the MATLAB. When you are looking at the script file, you can just enter the name of the script file from command line, or in the new version, there is a green arrow. If you press that, it will execute it. Name of the script file. Name of the script file. EDX, exactly. Right. right. I don't think so. Why? Is there a, something happening there? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs>